Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but they doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am always with you to the end of the age. I am very grateful to the congregation for the opportunity for Nilsa to share a word with us. Um, as I said in the midweek, Reverend Nilsa Arizari and I met on our trip to Israel-Palestine at church. We got paired together as roommates, and it was a blessing for both of us. Um, we have continued to stay close and be friends, although we come from very different walks of life. And um, she is ordained since 2019. Um, in the Metropolitan Community Churches. She came from Chicago, born and bred, and uh, has a wonderful, warm-hearted, loving, and perfect for the beginning of pride, actually, theology, that I'm excited for her to share with you today. So please welcome Reverend Nilsa Irizari. Thank you. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Um, oh, I meant to give you this. Sorry. Can you hear me with this, or? It's okay good. without the head? All right. Yeah, okay. That'd be perfect. Um, so welcome, thank you everyone for welcoming me. This is, I have a little cold, so my apologies. Um, I did test negative for COVID, so it's not COVID. <laughs> so I am so grateful and honored and privileged to be here with each one of you as a, a guest um, preacher um, in the Kansas City um, United Church of Christ. I extend my gratitude to my colleague, Reverend Jessica, and to each one of you for trusting me um, and sharing the pulpit this morning. Oh, okay. We have some people hard of hearing. Technical difficulties, one moment. <laughs> Hello, good morning. Oh, all right. Jesus is ready. Um, so again, thank you everyone for welcoming me, uh, me here. I've had a wonderful visit since I've been here on Friday. And I'm also very thankful to have yet um, attended the Queer Revival yesterday at um, the First Church of St. Joseph. It was absolutely beautiful, so thank you for Brian, um, Pastor Brian. Um, it was so transformative and beautiful and life-giving. So, you know, God definitely was there, and God is always showing our love. So if you center yourselves with me for prayer so we can start um, sharing some of the reflection. Dear God, dear God of many names, you're here with us. Let us pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my God and my Redeemer. May it be so, Jesus, amen and ashe. So beloveds, today is Trinity Sunday, as known as the first Sunday after Pentecost, um, to honor the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. And we have embarked in this month of June um, it is so vibrant, full of life, full of observances, celebrations, and awareness. As many of you know, um, we are in Pride Month, um, an annual celebration of many contributions that have been made by our LGBT plus siblings, um, their community, our history, um, our socials, our cultures worldwide. And I also know I left my bow, I know, I left my bow and my glitter at the house, but I do bring this beautiful stole, and um, it'll be well this morning. Um, also, we navigate to June uh, 10th, which is a federal holiday in the United States that commends the end of slavery of African Americans. And so I stand here with you with much grace, with one of the first churches, as my pastor friend has mentioned to me in the country, that adapted the open and affirming distinction back in the late 1990s. So love was present back then, and love is present here, um, when others did not accept who and what you were doing back then. So I'm so grateful that God's doors were open back then and are still today. And also, a sanctuary of God's LGBT plus people, 
whom God loves and has called by name to be God's hands and feet. In a world, we are LGBT people who are part of the Great Commission. And we are children of God as well. No matter what people say, can I get an amen? Wasn't that a beautiful song earlier? It was amazing. God's love and grace does live here. I'm so grateful for that. So we're starting with the seasons of beginning. It is said that we experience things through seasons. We are moving through the seasons of commencement. Many of you might experience that. It's the official term for graduation ceremonies where students and their families and their faculties, they celebrate the accomplishments, yes? A ceremony program that outlines could be varied. It could be from a processional of graduates, um, invocation, a commencement speech, if you will, and the presentation of graduates while they receive their diploma and also closing remarks. Now, commencement ceremonies are these pitiful markers in our lives that become our north in the compass that we will take along with us at the beginning of our new seasons in our lives. Now, commencement speeches, they command students and followers to use all of their skills that they have learned into action. I remember the privilege and blessing when God granted me as an adult student to experience the honor of higher education. Now, to be honest, it took me a while, a long time, to accept the calling that God had possessed on me earlier in my life. And when I finally yielded um, to the call in 2011, I enrolled in Chicago Theological Seminary um, Divinity Program. And it took me, oh my goodness, it took me six years part-time, full-time job, children and grandchildren, um, to be able to accomplish getting this degree. Thanks be to God. Yes, thanks be to God. Now, the day that I walked on that stage, I cried so profusely. You see, not only because I was late in my 40s, I'm not going to age myself, but I was late in my 40s, and, but also because I had made it. This was big. I mean, I, the person that was told that I was an ab abomination, that I was going to go to hell because of who I loved, I mean, who am I, and how can God call me, right? These are questions that we also wrestle with. Now, how dare I step on the stage and receive the diploma, not only as a person who is same-sex gender loving, but also a Latina who had experienced racial inequities and who was deemed in society as a second-class citizen. That is one of the heartaches in our communities. My otherness has always been part of me and will always be part of me in a society that upholds superiority based on race. Now, I know God had chose me, and God chose me as part of all nations. Now, in the sea of family members and friends who observed me in one of the most important days of my life, it was compiled of these rhythms and sweats and tears and joys and hard work that led me to this moment. Now, attending seminary, as many of you might know, um, it moved me in directions I could not have imagined. It's no joke. It dismantled me and reconstructed me again. They speak truth when they tell you that. Now, I entered these classes with younger people than I in age, and they had many years of experience in church because, you see, I had a very limited relationship with the Bible. I came in with these new lenses that helped me challenge these ideologies that I was told that as a spiritual leader, there was many spiritual leaders who told me and who condemned me again for who I loved. But yet, I understood God. I knew that God was not a punitive God, not the one that I know, and he was always going to be with me. But God liberated me, and God was with me by my side in the moments of my brokenness. You see, God was always with us, with you, with me. See, because Jesus surely had promised me that I am with you always to the very end of age. Jesus was right there on the stage waiting for me as I walked with pride and joy across the stage. And momentarily, I turned to the eyes of the audience like a sonar, like I'm looking at all of you now, 
detecting the signal of my beloved loved ones. You see, my granddaughter was sitting in the audience. She was seven at the time, and she sat back looking at me. And when it was all over, I walked to her, and I hugged her, and I told her, Mama, it's never too late. May I get an amen? It's never too late. So the Great Commission, if you will, was Jesus' commencement speech, right, to his 11 disciples. It was this beginning. Um, in these profound and concise words, God gave us one of the greatest commandments and speeches of all time. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Son, and the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I will always be with you in the end of age. Isn't that beautiful? I will always be with you in the end of age. Now, as we celebrate Pride Month, we uplift LGBTQ plus people, also black, indigenous, and people of color communities, members of all nations. You see, because I'm a part of both. I'm LGBT++, and I'm BIPOC. I'm also in the part of the black, indigenous, and people of color communities. And belonging to both, I have experienced racism within my own LGBT plus community from non-people of color who are supposed to be welcoming and affirming for me in my wholeness, but of course, there are also some microaggressions that are real. But then, the other side, in my latina -ness community, I experience homophobia for being an LGBT person. Then let us throw in the mix of this equation the fact that I am a clergywoman. Can you imagine that? How can I, a child of God in a society that has expressed that all nations do not include me or us? I mean, I never thought it was possible to be a Latinx lesbian and a clergywoman at the same time? Oh my God, that's impossible. But God reveals things in time to all of us. You see, my parents um, are Catholic and we did not attend church for worship service and as I got older, my relationship with organized religion was very limited. Um, despite the fact that I believed in God and God was always with me in these uncommon times, there wasn't this relationship that I had per se. You see, in my adulthood, I continued to search for a church home where I can nurture my relationship with God because of my sexual orientation. I felt so distant from God, and I believed that my relationship with God could not be a reality. I wonder how many times in our lifetime that we have ever felt that way here, in one way or another. On the rare occasion when I did attend church, I heard these heteronormative um, messages from the pulpit that were very harmful for me and my loved ones at the time. They were not far from liberating. And I heard that being a person that was homosexual was an abomination and people like me and like us would be going straight to hell and that my lifestyle and my identity did not align with the canon. But God is good all the time, isn't he? I mean, moving forward in time in 2007, it was serendipitous when I met a clergy person named Reverend Kevin Downer. We were in a work-related meeting, and if God had called all his disciples, he surely called Reverend Kevin Downer. If you will, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in my name. You see, I would not be standing here in front of you with all my fabulous and human, you know, my humanity as a faith leader and follower of Jesus today if Reverend Kevin Downer didn't understand the assignment of the Great Commission. May I get an amen? May I get an amen? Now, he introduced me to Metropolitan Community Churches, which at the time I had not heard of the religious denomination, an international LGBT affirming mainline Protestant church uh, Christian denomination. Um, the first congregation was fun funded in Huntington Park, California by former Pentecostal pastor uh, Tory Perry on October 6 of 1968. And now UCC and MCCs, we're very connected. We have true kinship. 
around the world, as you all might know. Um, he invited me to join him for a cup of coffee, and we went down to the bookstore, and unbeknownst to me, when I accepted that invitation, God was working, and God showed up. My life was transformed forever. Now, we met over coffee, and Reverend shared with me the liberating message of MCC. And there was this new church plant coming to Chicago. It was called The Church for Me. Now, my heart dropped. I was so full of joy. I mean, the wind of the Holy Spirit filled that bookstore where we were gathered. You see, it rests on me, if you will, in the bewilderment because I questioned, could this be true, God? I mean, after all of these years of feeling estranged from God, is there a possibility that I have found a home church, a sanctuary where I can worship as God's free child without a fear of prosecution for being who I truly am, who, called, who God has called me to be? Now, this was beginning of a partnership that changed the moment in time for himself and for me, I dare say. Um, we moved into this faith collaborating mentorship and relationship, if you will. And God planted that seed. The rest is history. Now, he did not realize at that time that MCC and my new church saved my life. Jesus, God, saved my life. You see, being a follower of Jesus is not easy and it will never be. There are these struggles that we go in and out of in our daily lives. The sea of hope that bears fruit, that nurtures my passion to serve Jesus. And I learned that I was and I will always be a child of God. I am one of a kind and so it's each one of you. You know, I was unapologetically made and I carry a uniqueness in myself. So did the disciples. They were all unique in their own way. Now, God knew who I was before I came out of the closet. Now, I'm just saying, now, wow. I mean, I do come out of the closet a lot. It's just not one-time experience. And that is for another sermon for another day. May I get an amen? Amen. Now, I'm going to share a commencement speech with you, if you will. Give me some grace here. I'm going to give this um, speech to you. Thank you, Jesus for giving us instructions on how to go and to make disciples of all nations. Uh, thank you for sending out all of the teachers and people who have made my faith journey everything that it has been. It is my honor to follow Jesus and spread the good news for all nations. So congratulations, all of you followers of Jesus. Today is a great day. It is a day where we celebrate one another and I want to acknowledge each of you for all of your hard work that you have done and are continued to do in this community of Kansas City. During the last few years, you know, you have learned Jesus' teachings and witnessed God's love and grace and forgiveness in your life and in others. Today, we collectively move to obey everything that Jesus has commanded us to do. Now, for those in mission and possible uh, show or movie fans. Any Mission Impossible movie fans here? Yes, amen. Now your mission, should you decide to accept it, is as a follower of Jesus to move from where you are to where you would like to be and where all people of our nations are. Invite people from all ethnicities and country of origins and from all parts of the world. You see, this is not an inclusive club only made for VIPs, CIOs, ballers, or shark callers, how they call it in Chicago. Everyone is welcome. No, how many, no matter how many likes you have in social media, I'm not really much of a social media person, or how many likes or followers, God's door are open to all, like you all have in that long. But what does that mean? What does that really mean when the doors are open for all? It means to use the gifts that God has given each of you individually, bless you, your individual talents, your testimony, and be God's representatives here on earth with one another. You know, share the good news in liberating and non-oppressive ways and trust that the Holy Spirit is at work always. Now, please know that we as people of faith have not arrived. It is a long process to be in relationship with God. We nourish ourselves every day with the word, 
growing authentically to what God has called us to be. We learn to study. We uplift scripture through liberating and racial equity and trauma-informed and care lenses, which foster these amazing affirming relationships with one another in holistic ways so that we can build a faith-based community. Now, everyday practices with Jesus, he calls us and commands us to make disciples of all nations so everyone can have an opportunity to know Jesus. And how have you been moved today in this season by the Great Commission? Think about that. How have you been moved by the Great Commission this season? Because during the last or during the time of COVID, we're still in the time of COVID, it's been over three years, we have experienced unimaginable grief. And the inequities of our world, they continue to heighten. And rhetoric messages from governmental officials, the resurgent of banding of books, and the intensifying of racial inequities that are continue to uphold racist systems and policies continue every day. And I know that I'm preaching to the choir as they say, on this day and every day moving forward, I call you to continue to be anti-racist advocates, to dismantle racist systems and that violate the bodies and lives of all black, indigenous, and people of color's bodies, and also the LGBT plus BIPOC community that are experiencing tremendous racial inequities and injustice, because racial equity and justice are non-negotiable. Now, how many of you have heard about the talk? Okay. Now, I'm not talking about the talk show, the talk. No? But I am talking about the talk. Um, the talk is this critical expression for a conversation that a black parent or a brown parent in the United States feel compelled to have with their children and teenagers about the dangers that they face due to racism or unjust treatment from authority figures, law enforcement, or other policies or parties. And how to de-escalate them. This practice began generations ago, and it is considered a, 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 a risage of passage. Now, I have had several versions of this talk with my Puerto Rican son. See, I was born and raised in Chicago, but I am from Puerto Rico. And as a brown man in living in Chicago, and as his mother, when he was younger, he was waiting for the CTA bus in Chicago. And after he purchased his new car, and his first car as an adult, and also now as a brown man, we talked about what does it mean to be driving while brown. Now, driving while brown refers to that situation when a brown person is singled out for an arrest or a traffic stop due to a perceived notion about their ethnicity. Now, you see, my adult son, he's 36. Can you believe I'm, he's 36? And on April 21st of this year, my son was going to start a new beginning with his or my daughter-in-law, Jennifer, which I love. And he was moving from Denver and he was going to North Carolina. And he was going through this drive on his own for the first round, and he said, Mom, before I depart, can I call you so we can talk over the phone on this journey? And I said, of course. Now, mind you, I'm a jokester, and I, 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 I cracked a joke, and I felt obliged to tell him to please be careful while driving, because I had made this joke, and he was laughing out loud, so loud, that I was worried that he was going to call attention to himself. And I have been conditioned to this behavior. I'm very hypervigilant. So my son declared to me, Mom, do not worry. I dressed up. I am not wearing my sport jersey, my baseball cap, nor my gym shoes. You hear that? I'm not wearing my jersey, my baseball cap, nor my gym shoes. I was dressed up just in case. Immediately, my eyes got watery, and a sense of this warmth filled me as I gasped for air. Can you imagine? This is 2023. I was crushed with this belief that I still have to engage in this talk in this year. The heartbreak here, too, was so big because he was code switching. 
And many of you might not know or might know that code switching is to change a person's attire to conform, not to be perceived as a potential threat or experience racial profiling while driving from state to state. Now, this is not God's will for our children. This is not the world that God has called us to lift and build here on earth. This is not his kingdom. We are all God's beloved. So I leave you with these things here to think about for the rest of the words that I will share with you. There is so much work to be done. We are constantly reminded that the fight for justice is not over, beloved. It's, it's not over. The body of Christ needs to continue to include inclusion and recognition of humanity of all of its persons. I don't know if a few days ago you all heard that Uganda's president signed a repressive anti-LGBT law. This is the harshest of its kind for that community. And the human rights campaign has reported this year alone, this week, more than 520 anti-queer and anti-queer bills have been introduced or introduced, excuse me, to the states. More than 125 attacking health care laws and bills for trans kids and community. No matter where we live, no matter who we are, this is the kingdom of God. And these bills and laws that we have, they have a chilling effect on our transgender siblings and non-conforming community. Now, I know that you are an exceptional church. I've heard great things about you. So tell me, how do you want to continue to mentor, man, mentor and foster relationships with others that will be helpful, that will be, allow them to come into the fold and be followers of Jesus, to be there and to go forward and continue to make disciples of all nations? If you were in front of a graduation class, if you were in front of a membership class, what would your commencement speech be? In what ways will you fulfill the com great commission in this text? Now, I share this gift with you of my lived experience because this is my testimony that got into the word, and I was able to celebrate pride here with you all today. In the end of the great commission, Jesus, the greatest commencement speaker of all times, if you will, he leaves us with this reassurance that I am with you always to the very end of age. So today and every day moving forward, celebrate the beauty that is each one of you. That is one of you. How is Jesus calling you to go forward and make disciples of all nations? I share this to you from the smiles that you give your barista when you get your coffee in the morning, all the way to the things you do when you put your shopping cart back into its stall. Right? How will you show up in this world really and truly matters. So let each people, each person that you encounter today and every day see the God in you, see the light in you, because as your denomination says, God is still speaking. And what is your new beginning for this season? May I get an amen, ashe, and will it be so? Thank you so much. <laughs>